what the practice of profound dialogue amounts to is recognizing that you have inside your being all the great minds, all the great persons in your life, maybe your parent, maybe your teachers, uh, maybe people you've read, that, th that this reside there as a counsel of advice, reside there as people who speak to you about your life issues. So everybody has this interior counsel. And the practice is to take charge of that counsel, to recognize these are valuable voices, all the great people that have addressed your life in some way or another, exemplified it, gave you ways of living, showed you things. Uh, to take charge of your counsel means to decide who are the most important ones for people to listen to, <laughs> put them on the front row of your counsel. Uh, maybe you organize your counsel by types of uh, people and on types of subject matter that you have one counsel for this, one counsel for this, one counsel for that. But the discipline is to realize that not only do you listen to these great voices in, that you've acquired in your lifetime, but also you can speak back. Uh, you can argue with them. You can dismiss them from your counsel entirely if they become voices you no longer need to hear. Uh, so this is, a, this is the practice, is to recognize that interior counsel and, and construct your dialogue with it. And that's a lot of what we do when we do meditative readings and, and dialogue with the scriptures and, and read the great theologians and, and do things of that nature. So it's inner dialogue with Paul Tillich and, and Rudolf Bultmann and, and A. H. Almas and Martin Luther and <laughs> Jesus and the Buddha and whoever's on your inner council of persons that have uh, already in interfered with your life. So that's a very important practice. When I read Dogen's teaching, there are that three kinds of time or three ways of viewing the time or understanding the time. In the first kind of time, in common sense, my friend died uh, almost 50 years ago. Uh, and uh, he is uh, existing or alive uh, in my mind as his memory. And he is still alive. That means uh, because of what he did to me or for me, you know, I'm here and I'm doing this. If he didn't go to the temple and allowed me to read my teacher's book, I, I'm not here. So he is still alive in me. And also within this time which doesn't flow, you know, we are always together. So uh, that is uh, how we understand, you know, we are connected with not only my friend, but my teacher, uh, Uchiyamura, she died uh, 1998, about 20 years ago. But when I sit, I felt Uchiyamura, she's sitting with me. So time is kind of a very interesting thing. So Do Dogen, when he discussed about time, he said time can, fly, can f uh, fly or move from future to the past, present to the past, not only from past to the future. As a kid, um, it was our pastor at the parish, Monsignor Anthony S. Spina. He was a Monsignor, but he would always kind of humble himself because he said, but my name is Anthony S. Spina, and when you take my initials, it says ass, and he says, and I'm a dumb ass, he would say to us. And, uh, but he was a role model. He loved ritual. He engaged rituals beautifully. And the pastor, the associate pastor with him, Father John DiCaprio, both of whom are dead, and whom I summon every morning uh, into presence when I pray for the dead in the morning. I do the Kaddish, the Jewish prayers for the dead, but I do it Roman Catholic style. And I summon both of them in. I call upon them. 